Hello everyone and welcome to another video on JavaScript programming. Kaushal this side from SimpliCode and today we are going to discuss DOM manipulation and window object in JavaScript. This is the part 1 of this topic. Before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss an update from SimpliCode. So without any further delay, let's get started. As we know, the document object model is simply the same HTML document with a different representation, right? The reason behind this diverse representation is that it's easy for JavaScript to interpret this format. JavaScript can't understand tags in an HTML document, but it can understand these objects. Therefore, JavaScript can easily manipulate these objects using different functions, which we'll discuss in today's video. So if you haven't watched the previous video on what is document object model, I'll suggest you to go through it before we move on to the DOM manipulation. In this tutorial, we will understand the basics of how we can use JavaScript while creating or working on a website. It's like a real world application of JavaScript. In this particular video, we are going to discuss the window object present in JavaScript. We'll also see how we can take input from the user for some special tasks. So let's move ahead and discuss window object in JavaScript. A window object is actually a global object present in the client side JavaScript that can be seen in a Chrome browser. Let's move on to the programming part directly and it will be easy for you guys to understand. So let's write something on our console first to see if the JavaScript file is working fine or not. So we'll write on the console. We'll write here console.log. Let's say we are printing a string. We'll write here welcome to simply code. Right. So we have to write here console.log and we are good to go. So save it and here you can see we have the string in our console. So this means the browser is working fine. So let's create a variable now. Let's say we are creating a variable a and we'll write here window let's suppose because we are talking about the window object today now we have written here window let's print this variable on our console first and then we'll see further so let's say we are writing a console.log and we are printing a on our console save it and here you can see in the console that we have the window object here and if we click on this object see we have a whole list of methods present here inside the window object this window object actually works the same as the date object or the math object present in JavaScript. It also contains methods that are predefined in JavaScript to perform some specific tasks. So here you can see we have an alert method here and we have many more methods, right? So we have alert, we have close, we have cookie store and so many other methods as well. If we go down here, we can see we have the document method here as well. So this document method contains the URL of that HTML file and one can access it. If we copy it from here and if we paste it here in a new tab. So let's say we are pressing enter and here you can see we have the same HTML document. We have window.html open over here. So this document contains the URL of the HTML file and one can access it with the document method. Next up, we have two different ways of using the window object in JavaScript. Suppose if we want to use the alert method. So if we want to use the alert method, let's say we are writing here window dot alert. This is the first way of using the alert method. Save it and let's say we are providing a string here. Let's say hello everyone. Fine. So Save it and here you can see we have a pop-up in the browser saying hello everyone, right? So we have a pop-up here. If we remove the window keyword from this statement, like if we remove this window keyword from here and if we say okay and let's save this program again and here you can see we have the same output again. So this is how we can use methods present within the window object in JavaScript. We can either write window dot the method name or we can just write the method name both will work fine let's move ahead and talk about the prompt method so guys you might have noticed that we never took any input from the user till now 
if we want to add two numbers let's suppose and we want the user to input those two numbers of the user's choice we have to use the prompt method here to do so so let's create a simple program that will take two inputs from the user and then it will print the output on the console or directly on the browser so we have to create two variables to store the values given by the user so let's say we are commenting these lines and we are creating two variables here so let's say the first variable is where x and the next variable is where y so we are not giving any values right now so next up we'll use the prompt method in both the variables so what we have to do is we have to write here prompt and we have to enter what we want to print on that particular prompt so we'll write here let's suppose enter the value of x and we'll do the same at y variable as well so we'll copy it from here and we'll paste it here and we'll write here enter the value of y one thing to keep in mind with prompt is whatever input prompt takes from the user it takes the input as a string suppose we try to run this program okay if you are trying to run this program let's say we are writing here console.log and we are printing x plus y so let's try to save it so here you can see it says enter the value of x so let's say we are entering 45 and then again we are entering 50 so we want the output as 95 the moment we will press ok you can see here the output is 4550 because the input taken with the help of prompt method will always be a string so if we want this to be a number what we have to do here is we have to use the percent right i hope you guys are aware of this term percent it is used to change a string value to a number value so we'll write here percent and we'll put it inside a bracket so similarly we'll do the same for variable y as well so now we can add two numbers without any problem so let's save this program again and here we have the prompt which says enter the value of x so let's say the value of x is 50 again and we'll press enter then let's say the value of y is again 45 fine the moment the user presses enter after inserting the desired value like the moment we'll press enter it will print the output as x plus y so it will print 95 on the console so let's see if it works press enter and here you can see we have the output as 95 so we can do one more thing here we can print it on the browser as well for that what we have to do is we have to write here document dot write and we have to pass the values of x plus y so let's save it now and let's enter the value as 45 and 50 again so here you can see we have the output as 95 on our browser so this method is working totally fine we'll use these two methods again in other videos while manipulating an actual html document with javascript in the next video most probably so we'll go through events and we'll see how interesting it is to use javascript along with html and css so for now let's move ahead and take a look at another method that is the confirm method we use this method when we want to provide the user with the choice of yes or no it actually assigns a boolean variable whose value can be either true or false depending upon ok or cancel whichever button the user is clicking so let's see the confirm method as well so what we'll do we'll comment this and again say so we have a variable a as window right so let's use this variable so we'll write a, a equals to confirm and any string we want to print so let's say we are writing a are you sure or anything else you want to write so let's write a console.log and we are printing the value of a fine we have used console.log to print the value this confirm method returns to make it easy to understand so let's save it and see here in the browser we have a pop-up with a message are you sure and we have two options right we have ok and cancel if we click here ok so let's click here ok you can see in the console we have the output as true so and if we click cancel here 
So you can see the output as false in the console. I hope you guys understood this. So till now we know about alert, prompt and confirm method. The fun part is we don't use these methods too much in general these days. Because we have bootstrap and CSS for doing these operations more efficiently these days. So we are going through these topics because these are the basic topics one should know while working on JavaScript. We should have knowledge about window object to understand how JavaScript is embedded with HTML to make beautiful and responsive web pages. Similarly, the document is also a part of this window object. Fine. So if we write here, let's comment this as well. And let's say if we write here, we have a variable A. Let's copy it from here and we'll paste it here. So let's say we have a variable A and we'll write here window dot document. Fine. Next up, we'll print variable A on a console. So we'll write here console dot log and we'll print the variable A. If we save it now and here you can see we have the whole document here in the console. So if we click here, you can see we have the whole document. We have all the tags here. We have head tag, we have body tag and even we have the script tag as well. So whatever tag we had in our HTML documents, all these tags are written over here. Basically the entire document is here, right? So we'll go through DOM manipulation as well. We'll make changes to a particular HTML document for now. One thing I want you guys to focus on is the window object. Next up, let's talk about the window's inner width and inner height. So if we write here in the window.js, if we write here window, let's say window.inner height. So save it. And here you can see we have the height as 149. Now if we try to make changes in the size of Chrome, let's say if we try to change this size here and let's refresh it see here we have the output as 100 let's change it again and refresh it again we can see the output as 111 and let's do it once more so here you can see we have the output as 144 now similarly we can use inner width as well so if we write here inner width and save it here you can see we have the output as 335 so if we change the width of this particular document and refresh it here you can see the output is also changed to 564 so these are the two methods the inner height and the inner width we might use them in further videos similarly we have many more methods present within the window object to perform specific tasks we have the location we have scroll x method we have scroll y which works the same as inner width and inner height you can go through all these methods for that you have to write here variable a and window so save it now and here you can see we have all the methods present here so these all are the methods we have present within the window object so there are more than 100 methods present here or maybe more than 200 or 300 methods if you scroll down you can see we have a number of methods present here you can go through any of these methods so you guys can use them by yourself or we'll discuss the important ones whenever we need them. This was a brief intro to document object model manipulation. That's all for this video guys. See you in the next one where we will try to manipulate a basic web page with the help of JavaScript. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments below. Share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe SimplyCode. Thank you.